Hello there, I'm Gillian Joseph. Over the next hour, we'll share the mission, vision and plans of the world reimagined, which we've been working on with a growing community of people since May 2019. We're excited to share them with you and even more excited to invite you to join the world reimagined family. Now, the last 12 months have laid bare the relentless and insidious impact of racial injustice in our society, the daily indignities that wear down your spirit a system that blocks opportunities and drains hope. A dialogue that often assumes that just because we say we matter, we're suggesting anybody else doesn't. For a lot of people, it's been an exhausting year, but the last 12 months have also shown people's capacity for good, the compassion and courage, the power and solidarity of those working for the cause of racial justice. That simple idea that we should build a society in which every human life, every person with their own hopes and dreams is equally valuable and precious. If we're going to build on that momentum and travel the next part of the journey together, we need to better understand how we came to be here in this moment in time. The reality is too much of our shared history is shrouded in darkness or one dimensional. Take the transatlantic slave trade. Its history has been untold, unheard, mistaught or misrepresented. In the UK, we rightly celebrate with pride the trade's abolition, but its creation, Britain's role and its devastating legacy are usually missing from how history is told. It's not black history, it's all of our history. This isn't about casting blame or pointing fingers, but building understanding and acknowledging one another. We believe that the UK at its best is strong enough, good enough, decent enough to have that conversation. Not as a needless revisiting of the past, but an essential reframing for our future. It doesn't diminish who we are, but in its courage enhances who we are. And so if we're going to make racial justice a reality for all, it calls on us, people of every colour, creed and culture, to courageously face our shared history with honesty, empathy and grace. If we do that, we can create a future in which all can say, I am seen. That's the mission. The world reimagined will see trails of large globe sculptures in cities across the UK in the summer of 2022, created by artists to bring to life the reality and impact of the transatlantic slave trade. Walking through cities along the trails will inspire people of all ages to embark on a journey of discovery exploring both breathtaking art and accessible history, reimagining the world we live in and the one that we can create together. As you'll hear, the trails will sit at the heart of a broader learning and community programme that we want schools, community groups, sporting and cultural institutions across the country to join. We're working with so many incredible partners, we're building a meaningful, ambitious vision. The foundation of all that we do is our journey of discovery. To tell you about it, I'm delighted to introduce my fellow board member, the artist historian, Fiona Compton, coming to us from St. Lucia. Thanks, Gillian. We believe in the idea that what you understand and know about the world shapes how you see the world. Too much of our shared history is shrouded in darkness. The World Reimagined's journey of discovery is about bringing that history, the stories of people, their lives and events into the light. To make it real and tangible so that you can see it, hear it and feel it. With its nine themes, our journey of discovery begins centuries ago in the richness and cultures of Africa and stretches out into the future we can create together. Each theme is fundamentally about the power of people to shape the world and have an impact. Whether it's an extraordinary capacity for barely imaginable cruelty or breathtaking strength, courage, and joy. For each of the themes, we are working with experts and organizations across the world to build a really accessible collection of stories and bring its history to vivid and meaningful life. That collection will be available as artists create their designs, as people visit the sculpture trails, as well as students exploring the subject in a brand new way. We invite you to walk this journey with us, to acknowledge the fullness and complexity of our history, to recognize and honor 
those who have gone before and imagine what might be possible. Sharing our journey of discovery, I am delighted to introduce the amazing cast members of Western Hamilton, who will guide you through the nine themes throughout this program. Mother Africa explores the richness and reality of Africa before the transatlantic slave trade and the impact of the slave trade and empire. It considers and celebrates the present and future of Africa. True Mother Africa. The richness of Africa before the 1500s, its science, art, education, and agriculture. The faces of slavery. The differences and similarities between European and African slavery. Enslaving Africa. How the transatlantic slave trade transformed the politics, economy, and spiritual practices of Africa over the centuries. African Renaissance. From independence to groundbreaking innovation. This is the story of African achievement, renewal, and future possibility. Icons. Let us remember and celebrate the people who shaped Africa over the centuries. The reality of being enslaved makes real the experience of those people who were enslaved. From their capture and voyage to lives enslaved in different contexts, places, and generations. Capture. The different ways that capture was possible, from violence and tribal wars to trade agreements. Confinement, life in the castles, and the experience of awaiting transportation. Voyage. What was the journey for enslaved Africans really like? Life enslaved, the hierarchies, abuses, and roles on Brazilian, Caribbean, and American plantations. Systematic terror. How human trafficking operated from the physical to the psychological, and how those methods developed over time. Stolen Legacy Rebirth of a Nation brings to life how the UK was transformed as a result of the transatlantic slave trade and the free labour of the enslaved. It explores the legacy of the transatlantic slave trade on building the financial and trading power of the UK, on strengthening the church and the might of universities, and on establishing dynastic influence and power. Foundations in Slavery Follow the money to understand how wealth was built and remains in the UK as a result of the transatlantic slave trade. Compensation of political power. The money that ex-slave owners received brought influence and power that changed British politics forever. Upon this church. The church sat at the heart of the transatlantic slave trade and was one of its key beneficiaries. Disinheritance. The transatlantic slave trade created two divergent paths, one of increasing generational wealth and the other a deepening inability to own assets.
Abolition and Emancipation shares the story of the campaign for abolition, its key events, heroes, and allies. But it also lays bare the full, messy motivations and process for abolition, which were not as pure as often represented. Heroes and Allies identifies key abolitionists and their campaign methods, from art to testimony, protest and boycott. Walk to Freedom brings to life key moments in the journey to freedom, from the Haitian Revolution to emancipation and apprenticeships. Messy Motivations helps us understand a variety of reasons for ending the transatlantic slave trade, from profits to ethics and fear. Rebellions and Uprisings illustrates how so-called uprisings and revolts added pressure to end the enslavement of Africans. Freed in name only highlights how many enslaved people became apprentices, which meant they were free in title, but enslaved by circumstance. A complex triangle explores the legacy of the transatlantic slave trade on destination countries, their relationship with the mother country, key historical events within that relationship, such as the arrival of the SS Windrush, and how the transatlantic slave trade impacted Britain's role and reputation in the world. Britain's rush to profit. The transatlantic slave trade enabled the extraction of valuable resources from Africa with lasting consequences for its economies. Mother country, rose-tinted vision versus stark reality. Having been called upon to rebuild Britain post-World War II, the Windrush generation experienced the harshness of that invitation. Your country needs you. You. When Britain called, African and Caribbean soldiers demonstrated their bravery and sacrifice fighting in the First and Second World Wars. Complex legacies. Britain left an enduring mark on the countries of its empire with complex consequences for their rule of law, education, and healthcare. To honor or for liberty. Tensions exist within communities between respect for British institutions and a wish for independence. Echoes in the Present focuses on the present-day negative consequences of the transatlantic slave trade, systemic inequalities and injustice, entrenched racism and prejudices, and generational echoes with traumatic physical, behavioural, psychological and material consequences. Echoes across time. The deep impacts of plantation life are still experienced today with traumatic physical, behavioural and psychological consequences. Justice postponed. Black people have been and are still targeted by a system that doesn't deliver the justice it promises. First, do no harm. The failings of the healthcare system have caused many black communities to be distrustful of it. Lost innocence and potential. Black children have often been let down by the education system and their needs ignored. Still We Rise recognises and honours the enslaved and their descendants who resisted, who succeeded and who broke new ground. Let's share the well-known and celebrated and shed light on untold legacies and events. Resistance. 
People refuse to deny their humanity and against the odds, resisted. Courage of our ideals. Black people in the UK and beyond have led the way for social change to create a better society for all. Soaring high. Black innovators of thought, sport, music, science and business, from Nobel Prize winners to gold medalists. Authority of women. Celebrating the power of black women across Africa, the Americas, the Caribbean and the UK. From roots to fruit, the transformational work of black activists and grassroots organizations to uplift communities and to create social change. Expanding Soul celebrates the spirit and culture that even in the face of incredible physical suffering has endured, stayed vibrant, and found expression across the world in music, art, food, and every form. Grio to Grime. Delving into the history of black music and its contribution to the British identity. Carnival culture to cricket. The way celebration, sport and leisure have been used to challenge the status quo. A taste of home. How have our identities that are linked with food and flavor been shaped by our creative histories? The world we see. The widespread influence of black artists on our creative canons from the lost wax techniques of Benin to the global reach of Cubism. Through texture to textiles, exploring African and Caribbean influence on UK fashion, from hairstyling to fabric and clothes design. Reimagine the future. Imagine the society we can create when we understand our shared history. The place the UK can hold in the world. When it acknowledges its past and who we can become as people. When we give full dignity to all. The world reimagined. I am excited to be one of the patrons of The World Reimagined. This art education that we will be unfolding to the nation up and down in our cities will enable us to begin to understand the story of the transatlantic slavery. And let me say, this is not just simply about history. It is actually about the present. I say no more because I want you to experience it and to be equally excited about us as a community together. Great art can inspire, illuminate, challenge, move and transform us. At the heart of the world reimagined are the extraordinary globe sculptures designed by more than 100 talented artists. I'm delighted to introduce our artistic director, Lady Ashley Shaw Scott Ajay, who will tell us more about the artistic programme and how you can participate. From Steve McQueen to Tracy Emin, we have long relied on artists to express our deepest emotions, our jubilation, our sorrow, our confusion, even our anxiety. Art has the power to make us feel, to make us look around us at the world, look at each other, 
and ourselves differently. This is the journey we want you to travel on the World Reimagined Trails. Every trail features 10 globes. Each globe will have the same globe structure, 1.4 meters in diameter and 1.8 meters in height, including the base. The globe itself is the same, but the designs will be different every time with individual artists. Including all of the artists, we will have over 100 globes. Out of 10 globes, nine will be from the themes of the journey of discovery. The 10th will be an artist's collaboration with a community group to bring the world reimagined into the local community and speak to its place. Of the nine themed journey of discovery globes, we will have three types of artists, invited artists who are internationally renowned and have a practice that looks at black culture, race, and identity. The second group is a collaboration between artists and icons, icons from any discipline who are interested in this topic and will work together with the artist to bring one of the journey of discovery themes to life. And our last group and largest group will be open call artists who will come from any point in their career from amateur to highly experienced and exhibited around the world. From the end of May to the end of September 2021, UK-based artists in this open call group will submit their designs. We will offer free masterclasses from various artists and academics to engage with the topic of the transatlantic slave trade. We will also have access to free studio space in order to design the globe and fair payment for the work that each artist does, in addition to promotion across all of our platforms. Once the open call closes at the end of September, the final commissions will be selected by our jury, which alongside me features renowned artist Chris Ophelia, senior curator and head of curatorial and collection at Autograph, Renee Musset, director of Chisholm Hill Gallery, Zoe Whitley, and director of UCL's Legacies of British Slave Ownership Center, Professor Matthew Smith. Final designs will create a body of work through their inspiration and narrative power that will form a transformational outdoor classroom across the UK. After September 2022, when all of the globes leave our host cities, we will have an auction and the proceeds will go to funding racial justice organizations, as well as continuing our UK-based educational program. So artists, please go to our website, theworldreimagined.org, and register. We look forward to including your work to help us reimagine the world. I'm Eka Eshin. It's my great pleasure to be in conversation with the artist, Yinka Shonibara. Yinka, it's a great pleasure to talk to you as always. I just wanna start by asking you, the world reimagined, what's drawn you to this as a project? I was approached to uh, participate in a project which was mainly about um, exploring the uh, legacy of the slave trade and to try and understand it better. And then I thought about, you know, actually, you know, the story of people of African origin is much more uh, expansive than the slave trade. I know, you know, as Africans and people of the African diaspora, we've made huge contributions to world culture. And that goes from the sciences to the arts. And so I feel that why don't people celebrate that? And why don't more people know about that? Because the history we, we get at school doesn't necessarily you know, focus on, on black achievement. And, um, you know, and th that's a story that most people should know and be aware of, uh, particularly people from the African diaspora themselves you know and children of people and you know several generations down and so i thought about 
doing something I've, I've you know, titled as the world reimagined. And the idea of the world reimagined is to um, create a globe. And then, you know, we know about the slave trade and the triangular roots of the slave trade. And I thought, you know, I might do a globe in which, you know, we trace that triangle, but then rather than actually having enslaved people coming out of Africa, will it will be more of a, a conceptual, a, a, an intellectual uh, exchange between Africa and the rest of the world. And I thought, you know, along those routes, I can inc then include the names of um, artists, scientists, philosophers, because I think it is important to celebrate that contribution to global culture. How did you come to the globe as a device? So the world you imagine as a trail, it's a set of globes that are placed in, in public in different cities across the country. What for you is the particular significance of the globe as a symbol here? The globe has always been contested. You know, the map of the world is, it has always been drawn by the victors. And, you know, the acquisition of land, the, the, um, the demarcation of nations, you know, geography has, has been contested throughout history. And also, you know, there are misconceptions as well. Our geography can also be used to tell an imperial story. You know, there was a time when, you know, the British Empire covered, you know, most of the globe and, and all the pink areas, you know, belong to, they were the kind of colonies. And so, you know, mapping has always been contested. So it's, it seems to me then to be ideal to actually reimagine the map, reimagine that territory, and also the, the kind of legacy of colonialism, uh, particularly the scramble for Africa, in which Africa was actually you know, divided into countries without asking the people in those countries if they wanted to be in the same country or not. And, uh, and also it's about mapping resource as well, um, you know, claiming territory, you know, and um, so it seems to me actually, you know, very important to start from that and then look at the relationship between Africa and the rest of the world. I mean, it, it, I find it so fascinating because essentially through your work, you've always been an explorer. You've been an explorer of history, of place, of memory. Where and why this fascination with going back, with looking closer, with retrieving moments from the past in your work? Well, you know, I don't think you can actually properly understand the present without understanding your past. You know, you have to have a grasp of history to actually understand why things are the way they are today. You must come to terms with that. And unfortunately, you know, the history of um, Africa and the African diaspora is unfortunately quite traumatic and quite dark. And we do need to delve deep to understand why. And so it's kind of natural that I would then go back to history to try and understand the origins of a lot of things. You know, there's a, you know, London, for example, is a very uh, wealthy city. You know, there's the legacy of, of just sheer wealth, you know, Lloyds Bank, um, you know, there's so much, you know, Tate. I mean, all these things are around us and they are directly linked to the story of Africa and the story of empire, you know? Um, and I think we see those things every day as contemporary people living in London, we encounter them on a daily basis. And, you know, we must understand our relationship to those things. And uh, that's why I think history is extremely important. It's so fascinating because look, it feels like you grew up in Britain and, one of the narratives we are taught and told as we grow up is that 
history is a done thing. That the past is a story that, you know, is written in a book and is set in place. And what you're suggesting, what I hear from you, is that we can keep looking, keep re-inscribing, keep reimagining, because those stories can be told over and told again and told in different ways. Well, you know fully well that history is written by the victors. You know, it's often the winners who write history. And, you know, from the winner's point of view. And, you know, win winners, you know, quote unquote, you know, um, actually, we can say, no, you're, you've just written what you want us to hear. Yeah. But actually, we can take control of this and write it from our point of view. And that's what's not been done. And I think so, you know, we can actually begin to refuse victimhood. You know, I'm no one's victim. And I can actually take control of that and say, look, you know, I will write it from my perspective. That's your perspective, but I have a voice too. And that's what's important to me. One of the things I'm struck by, and I'm always struck by this with your work, is that you make all of this look really simple and straightforward and inevitable. <laughs> all of the complexity we've been talking about here. Okay, fine, you've done a globe, you've done some roots on it. Is that a difficult process to get to that place? Was this a difficult process or did this feel like uh, an obvious thing to do? You know, in many ways, it's actually an obvious thing to do uh, because, you know, I'm really surprised at, at how little we are actually celebrated. Yeah. I'm surprised, you know, and when you look at the achievements and the contributions, you know, we've made and our ancestors have made, you know, vast contributions that don't really seem acknowledged as such, or, or maybe acknowledged for a time and then forgotten. And, um, you know, and I think it's actually essential work to do this, you know, it's essential work. Uh, and I think, you know, in the light of Black Lives Matter, uh, in the light of the new report that, that just came out from the government, you know, we do have to stand firm and to actually say, you know, no, actually, you know, we, we've made huge contributions here. We need to be acknowledged and we need to be respected and we want discrimination to end. Uh, but we, we've got to make that part of our culture, part of our popular culture to change people's, um, you know, collective unconscious about us. So the globe is, an invitation for us to be seen more, to be heard more, to be us more. Yes, and to be celebrated and also uh, for us to be re-inspired by our own history yeah. so that our history is not purely one of trauma and a place of, a place of pain, that we are actually inspired and we can celebrate our own Achievement. Yinka Shainabara, thank you very, very much. Okay, thank you. Back in October 2020, the mayor and I received an email from Michelle Gale and Dennis Marcus, which described this new groundbreaking mass participation art education project, which would transform how our society understands the transatlantic slave trade and its impact. Bristol has been at the centre of a storm this past year that had been brewing for centuries and spilled over following the murder of George Floyd and the toppling of the statue of a Bristol slave trader that had been lauded in our city for far too long. The World Reimagined will complement a number of initiatives Bristol has started to take over the coming months and indeed years as we grapple with our past and try to unravel the many mistruths misrepresentations and miseducation of our citizens. We are really excited to partner with World Reimagine and join with other cities, cultural and civic institutions, and most importantly, schools and our African heritage communities as the trail of globes begin to emerge, each telling their distinctive truth about the transatlantic slave trade and its lasting impact on our ancestors. It goes without saying that given 
Bristol's key role in the transatlantic slave trade, as well as our very current legacy challenges, it really was a no-brainer that our city would feature in this project, given our deep and authentic commitment to helping our communities and society come together in dialogue to re-examine our understanding of our history and reimagine the world that we can create together, one rooted in acknowledgement, dignity and unity, and celebrating and cherishing our diversity. The future is what we make it. It is what young people make it. And we know that what we understand about the world drives who we are, what we do, and how we treat each other every single day. Creating the opportunity for young people to see the world anew through arts-based creative learning is one of the most powerful ways to create short, medium and long-term change. And so we're building the World Reimagined Learning Programme for schools, teachers and above all students across the UK. From Todd Morden in Yorkshire now, the award-winning social entrepreneur, founder of youth leadership charity Reclaim and the World Reimagined's very own Ruth Igbegbunner. Thanks, Gillian. Hi, everyone. I've had the absolute honour of working with young people across the north of England throughout the whole of my professional career. Seeing what young people can achieve and what they can believe with just the slightest bit of encouragement makes me understand that actually education is the absolute catalyst for any kind of significant social change. The World Reimagined Learning Programme will be a really exciting, engaging and experiential experience for students in a school setting. Using an arts-based learning approach, we intend to build young people's understanding of compassion, their, their courage to face a difficult subject and tackle it courageously, their critical thinking abilities and also their awareness of history, their place in history and what this programme means for the future for all of us. The World Reimagined will empower them to make the right decisions to make racial justice a reality. The learning programme is open to all schools and colleges across the whole of the UK and we're hoping that you sign up and join us in our journey. We're offering our schools free resources for lessons in the classroom. For primary schools this means a full exploration of the topic of Mother Africa. For secondary schools, we're creating modules that respond to each of the nine themes along our journey of discovery. Our resources are original. They've been created through dialogue, deep dialogue with educationalists and academics and creatives. We've been talking to top academics such as Kindy Andrews. We've got the cast of Hamilton who've been involved and given their time to support this work. We've worked with incredible writers and playwrights such as Inu Ellums. The work comes together and feels like a really exciting opportunity for pupils. As a teacher, I understand how important it is to feel confident about what you're delivering at the front of the classroom. And because of this, we'll be offering online free resources for our teachers, enabling you to feel that you can navigate some quite difficult lessons and some quite difficult conversations with confidence. We'll be enabling you to be a leader in delivering this work around racial justice and creating safe spaces to have effective conversations with young people around issues such as power and privilege. Our passion with this work is to bring together a learning program that you can deliver to your pupils that is creative, deep, informed, and something that can be transformational for young people. The first is a free version. These resources will be available for all schools and all colleges across the whole of the UK. And students will work through the different modules and at the end will express themselves creatively through the spoken word, through prose and through poetry. Their work will be uploaded and be shared on our portal and also be available locally, nationally, regionally. Everyone will be able to see the work that your pupils have put together and they will feel proud that they've been part of the journey. The second option involves a small fee. This will enable your students to design and to decorate their own globe to feature as part of the world reimagined. Schools will be given training and support on how to best bring to life the themes that their pupils want to celebrate across their globe. Our school globes will be hosted in the local community. They will be celebrated online and in the end they will be returned to your school as legacy pieces. As a teacher I feel really, really passionate about the fact this programme is needed. Pupils have been asking the questions and the World Reimagined supplies many of the answers. Hopefully we do that in a way that supports 
teachers to feel confident and also supports pupils and students to soar in their knowledge and their learning and their understanding of a challenging subject matter. So if you'd like your school to take part, please just contact us via the website. And also, and just as importantly, if you're a teacher or an educationalist working in an informal setting with young people, be that through a youth club or a youth charity, we'd also love to have you join us through the World Reimagined. So contact us via the website because we'd like as many young people as possible to take part in this programme. Working together, we can create a more hopeful and more just future for all. We so hope that you join us. My name is Lola Young and I'm an independent member of the House of Lords and I'm pleased to say I'm an ambassador for the World Reimagined. I'm Mark Miller. I am Head of Programme and Practice at Tate Modern. You can be educated in such a way as you see yourself as this kind of cog in a, in, you know, in a huge machine that is insignificant, but also that that machine is kind of enclosed in a funny sort of way, so you don't see outside of that. And I think it's really, really important to be able to situate ourselves within a bigger, 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 bigger world. And I think art's absolute perfect way mm. of, of people learning through doing and through, as you say, reflecting on who they are, where they are, and what their place is in this kind of bigger mm. world. You have this, these moments of a positive disruption. We learn through our everyday experiences, through our everyday relationships, through our ever, everyday relationships and connections. I could have a conversation like we're having a conversation now, and I can completely shift my thinking. And for me, that's like the important thing about learning is just that kind of openness and ability to disrupt and exchange and change, you know. My view on it would be that we're kind of uh, diminished as people if we don't have an understanding of otherness, other people, wherever they might be and what their histories might be. And if we think of um, the past, the past is unchangeable, right? But people who say you can't change history are wrong because history is always changing. And it's partly changing because we're acquiring new knowledge and new understanding and a variety of perspectives coming on board. As many people have said, black British history is all of our histories. Yeah. So if you, and, and somebody once used that, that, that analogy of, of saying that British history by and large was like a huge tapestry but with all the black threads taken out of it. So it's like reinserting those black threads into the tapestry so that you get a really multi-dimensional uh, view of, of, of what, what our history is. The dislocation of a lot of these histories kind of dislocate us as well if we don't understand it. And if we're not asking uh, the right questions, we're not going to find the right answers. The arts are a really good way of thinking through some of these tangled problems and challenges that we're trying to get to grips with, as is history and heritage and the way we think about the past, how we frame that past, how it needs to be reframed, and, and, and so on. Art is a space where we can share dialogue and exchange and, I suppose, release ourselves potentially from some of the constraints that hold us in our, in our society. The roots and the catalyst for change is community. Because of the relentless work of generations of activists, we know progress is possible. Hard, but possible. As much as the world reimagined will be a national programme with international reach, at its heart and focus will be a deep connection with the communities of our partner cities. And so the community programme is about ensuring that we work incredibly closely with our host cities' communities, sharing local history, honouring and supporting local organisations doing the work, and bringing together a broad range of people and communities to experience the programme. To introduce the community programme, the actor, singer, writer and co-founder of The World Reimagined, Michelle Gale, and our fellow board member, the award-winning author, social entrepreneur and activist, Lee Lawrence. Thanks, Gillian. Community is everything for us. Growing up, my mum, Maria Gale, set up Black Insight, a community organisation in Halston to provide education and legal advice. Through her, I learned the power of community activism.
tough, important work that's not often in the spotlight, but provides help and hope for so many who are struggling. My mum is Cherry Gross, who was shot in 1985 by the Metropolitan Police, which led to the Brixton Uprising. In the decades of our struggle for justice, we were comforted by the strength and solidarity of our community. Together, we worked for justice, and it was the power of our collective voice which really made a difference. Which proves that in our communities, that when we're willing to get to know and support each other, meaningful change can happen. We at The World Reimagined recognize the tireless work that individuals and organizations have done over the decades in pursuit of racial justice and equality up and down the country. That's why in each city, we're commissioning an artist to work with community groups to create the 10th globe in the trail, to speak to place, community, and the work of on the ground change. It is vital that the world reimagined is and feels of the communities in which it takes place, deeply connected both to the people and organizations who have done such meaningful work on racial justice. And also those communities who might not have taken part in these conversations before. We hope The World Reimagined offers a unique opportunity to engage in a conversation around how we understand each other's journeys. And we use that acknowledgement to create a more just future for our communities. We'll have community coordinators in each city to support individuals and organisations to host their own events during The World Reimagined. So the vision is, when people visit the trails and they want to become more engaged, then we will connect them to local organisations and events. It's really important that the World Reimagined has an enduring legacy. So at the end of the trails, we will auction the globe sculptures. Most of the money raised will create a grant-making programme for racial justice projects and organisations. Some will go towards enabling our community coordinators to continue their work for an extra 12 months after the World Reimagined has taken place. So they carry on supporting community organisations in their valuable work. If you and your organisation are interested in getting involved, please get in touch through our website. Last year we all had to reconstruct our worlds. We all had to reshape our worlds. We all had to deal with enormous uncertainty and find ourselves with contentment and order in our quiet. We had to worry about other people. What if we could absolutely reimagine our world? What if there was a world reimagined that included all people of cultures and races and backgrounds, all people of types and interests and perspectives, of histories and those of different thought? What if different geographies came together into one space and we could see our world as a place where equity and opportunity meant all had something valuable to bring and all something great to give? Let's reimagine our world. We're delighted to be a host city for the world reimagined. Swansea is a city that is inclusive, that we are a city of sanctuary. We want to harness this uh, partnership to make a positive difference to the communities within Swansea. In Swansea, we believe in the rights of every person. We want Swansea to be a happy, inclusive, healthy, and a safe environment so that people can become the best they can be. The World Reimagined is being made possible by the people and organisations who are joining our family. It's vital that businesses are part of our shared effort to make racial justice a reality. And we're delighted to share that we have deeply meaningful partnership opportunities to offer. Let's hear now from our advisor to the board, Gordon Hagen. When I first heard about The World Reimagined, I was so inspired by the aims of the project, I had to get involved. For most of my career, I've connected the creative and the commercial, and I've had the privilege of working with some of the world's best known brands. I know the power of businesses and brands living their purpose by taking actions that bring to life what they stand for. It goes to the core of who you are, how your clients, customers, and your people see you, and understand who you are as an organization. That's especially true right now. 
Since last summer, there's been an increase in global conversations about race and equity. And brands and businesses across the world have made significant commitments to racial justice. The World Reimagined presents a unique, exciting opportunity for businesses and their entire communities to get involved and actively make a difference. Sky is leading the way as the World Reimagined's official presenting partner. And now we're inviting business leaders and their entire organizations to partner with us. The reality of racial justice affects us all. And this project offers a compelling opportunity for you and your business to participate in this emerging global movement. To connect meaningfully with diverse communities across the UK and beyond. To work alongside some of the leading actors for racial justice. And perhaps most importantly, to play a key role in this national moment for racial education and healing. Tapping into the power of brands and business, as well as their networks and people, will be transformative, both for the world reimagined and for those who commit to working with us. We have a range of partnership offers available, from individual globe partnerships to national program partnerships, all delivering proven benefits. You'll also have the chance to create unique bespoke activations that speak to your brand objectives and meaningfully engage teams, clients, and the wider community. The world reimagined has a deeply authentic commitment to helping society come together in dialogue. The opportunity to join the pioneering group of organizations who have committed to supporting us will be of interest to many. Working together, we can re-examine our understanding of our history and reimagine the world as we can create it. If you would like to know more about how your brand, business or organization can get involved, please get in touch with us via the World Reimagined website. Thank you so much for allowing us to share the world reimagined with you. As you can tell, we're filled with purpose. Each day we work on the world reimagined. We meet people whose work, perspective, stories and energy inspires us. Together, we're building the world reimagined as a vibrant project that will help us all better understand and build a deeper sense of pride in what it means to be British. It begins with facing, considering and processing our shared history together. If we do that, we have the opportunity to truly see each other, to acknowledge so much pain, to honour those who lived, to celebrate those that inspire, to become comfortable with the complexity of our history and to act from love, compassion and respect for one another. Racial injustice and racism is not preordained fate. We can choose in our decisions and actions every day to be ambitious for a society and a country that speaks to the best of its people, our generosity, our compassion and our decency. Our future is what we choose to make it. So let us reimagine what is possible and make it a future worthy of the best in us where every person can say, I am seen. If you'd like to join us and get involved, we'd love you to get in touch through our website. Thank you so much for joining us. And now to close, please allow me to introduce the wonderful poet Keisha Thompson, performing her original work, The World Reimagined. In order to reimagine something, you need to understand what it is first. I thought the world was equivalent to the earth. But when you check the definition, the world means all of human activity. It's not about the physical globe, but about the physical nature of humanity. I guess that's where I've been going wrong. I've been trying to reimagine the world on my own, but it doesn't belong to me. You're not an ink drop on this lonely narrator's tongue. If I close my eyes this time, will you promise to come with me? You see, a dream is like a cloud, it's deceptively heavy. The imagination is far too vast for one person to explore. So come with me, whilst I try to reimagine once more. To reimagine means to take a mental picture, to take something that exists and put it in a different context, like a Benin bronze in a British museum cabinet. See, I don't really want to make mistakes of the past. I want to make compost of inherited hate and circular debates frustrate my fears until they're surpassed. So I guess that's where the re bit comes in. Re means to go backwards and start again. 
For too long, we've been singing a song of denial and discomfort. Tonsils thronging with the discordant sounds of a legacy gone wrong. We all make mistakes, but when you make a wrong turn, you can't keep driving straight, looking for change. So put me off. I won't be fueled by misguided pride and polished shame. I can no longer close my eyes when there's so much work to do. Put the nose back on the sphinx. Take the myth out of Timbuktu. I want to reach down the back of the sofa of this society and fish around for all that loose change. Like Aloda Equiano to slavery's abolition. Samuel Kojid Taylor to the classical music composition. Princess Sophia Dilip Singh to the suffragettes. You don't have to go far to see how easy it is to forget. No wonder my eyes don't want to invest in frivolous fiction when there's so much fact waiting for its recognition. I thought I could fix things by simply asking you to join me in the dark room of humanity, but photography, it's not a row of negatives waiting to be seen. It's about exposing what has already been. To reach the unknown, you have to retrieve, recall, rewild, reinstall, repurpose, repair, go back to the beginning, start again, but now do it with flair. The world reimagined is a lotus bud waiting to unfold. The world reimagined is bubble bath in the hands of a five year old. The world reimagined is our story untold. And telling it won't be easy. But that doesn't mean it can't be fun. We can turn fossils into plectrums, reject all that humdrum stuff fed to us without question. No suggestion that the truth is a spectrum. If you're the billing wall, I'll be the graffiti. If you're a scroll, I'll be the words of Rumi. Because there's no song outside of our vocal range. If I set my mind to it, my voice is louder than climate change. So take a step back. Use what's there. Make it new. Duchamp's masterpiece Fountain was an upgraded loo and it was actually discovered by a baroness called Elsa, to be completely honest with you. Like a Rorschach image, we all start from the same place, then come out with different perspectives and where we've gone wrong in the past is our failure to respect this. The world we imagined is a gallery of things we were not sold. The world reimagined is a humble alchemist's gold. The world reimagined is our story untold. I want to create a world where everybody treats each other equally and looks after in the environment. Hello, my name is Chelsea and I live in Birmingham, England. I want to create a world where people feel safe to express themselves and live freely and the experiences of global communities are preserved in balanced narratives. The world reimagined. Hello, my name is Zanara and I'm from Birmingham, England. I want to create a world where we are able to celebrate the beauty of each other's differences, to respect, tolerate and accept each other for who we are, to create a world where racial equality is a standard and empathy is a norm, where we are educated about black history, the world reimagined.